his day. As a boy, he always knew a sailor he would be, so he studied the law of the sea. Captain of his crew, a brave and vicious man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sun and sky and his heart would be his guide, a man of valor and pride. The king and queen, their blessings he obtained to carry the flag of Spain. Tempest and rain, a strong, courageous man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sails raised high, he searched the great unknown, his quest for adventure, dispelling any fear. A sure, courageous man, Columbus it was he, who sailed to new horizons across the great blue sea. Your Majesty, I am deeply honored to be given audience. My name is Christopher Columbus. Hmm, I'm told you have a theory that you wish to present to me. Yes, Your Majesty, but it's more than a theory. It's a plan to provide Portugal with a new trade route to the Indies. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for laughing, but it is hard to believe. Come now, Columbus, you're not fooling anyone. The only direct route to Asia is around Africa, and you know it. You're wrong. There is a better way to reach the Indies by sailing westward across the ocean. Westward? That's right. Allow me to explain. This should be amusing. <laughs> a westward route to the Indies? What a ridiculous notion. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Columbus, how dare you trouble the King of Portugal with such an absurd idea? No one has sailed across the ocean, and no one ever will. I believe you're mistaken on that point. Your Majesty, my idea is simple. Why go all the way around Africa when Asia can be reached by a more direct route? We hear it claimed that no one has ever crossed the ocean before, but the Vikings did it 500 years ago. That's right. Norse legends tell of ocean crossings to a land called Vinland. I believe this Vinland is actually Asia. If Vikings managed to do it, then modern Portuguese ships should have no trouble sailing across the ocean. Mm. Clearly, the voyage will be a navigational challenge, but the potential rewards are huge. Rewards? A direct route would make it easier to trade with Asia. Greater trade means prosperity, not only for the Kingdom of Portugal, but for every single trading nation in Europe. I know some are committed to the African route, and I wish them good luck in their search for it, but I remain convinced that Portugal has far more to gain from venturing west across the ocean. Your Majesty, I've drawn a detailed chart which shows my proposed route to the Orient. With your permission, I'd like to open it here and explain my plan for a westward ocean crossing. Needless to say, there will be comments and questions, and I'll be only too happy to answer all of them, for I have faith in my plan, great faith, and I am fully prepared to defend it. Let's see this chart. Yes, sire. Hmm? Here are the known waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Since the world is round, it follows that a ship which sets sail from Portugal and heads west will eventually reach Asia. Yes, but after how long a journey? You've hit on a crucial question there, Your Majesty. If the distance is too great, then there is no point in attempting the voyage. A ship would run out of fresh water before reaching Asia. Well then, that settles it. The whole idea is simply too risky. Wait, I'm not finished. Your Majesty, for several years now, I've been doing extensive research on the distance a ship would have to cover to reach Asia. Based on my own navigational measurements and on my readings of works by Ptolemy and Marco Polo, I estimate the distance to be 2,500 miles. That's very far, Captain Columbus. 
Yes, it is, Your Majesty. But assuming highly competent crews and sturdy, well-equipped vessels, I arrived at the following estimate. The voyage from Europe to Asia can be accomplished in the space of 40 days. You speak with confidence, Captain. Too much confidence, in my opinion. The ocean forms a great natural barrier. The Lord did not intend men to break that barrier. Attempts to sail across the ocean will never succeed. God's wrath will defeat them. I beg to differ, Your Grace. A new route to Asia would benefit the Church and its missions in the Far East. That's why I believe the Lord would smile upon this project. Your Majesty, I am Bartolomeu Diaz. I am a captain in the Royal Fleet. And I think an ocean crossing of this distance is simply too dangerous. There are dangers in any voyage. But I am convinced that with the right captain in command, this plan will succeed. Your Majesty, if you approve this project, I promise you I will prove these skeptics wrong. You would command the expedition? Yes. I have all the qualifications. I know I may seem youthful, but I have considerable experience in ocean sailing. If you approve this plan, I promise you I will bring glory to you and to Portugal. Can you the believe king it? Would this be Columbus mad. fellow is serious about crossing the ocean. <laughs> How many ships would you need, Captain? Two, Your Majesty. The two best in the Royal Fleet. Why, of all the cheek! Is he serious? I'd also require a crew of 25 able seamen for each ship. In addition, I need provisions for 90 days and a purse of gold for trade. I've never seen such gold. The king will surely refuse. Why, his demands are outrageous. It's greed, pure and simple. He ought to be tried for insulting the king's dignity. That will do. Captain Columbus? Sire. Your proposal intrigues me. Your arguments are forceful, your logic most impressive, and as for your requirements, they make very good sense to me. Thank you, Your Majesty. I will consult my advisors, then make my decision. Yes, sire. Your Majesty! I know, you don't like the project. Neither do I. As finance minister, I'm convinced that this project would be a drain on the royal treasury. It might also harm your majesty's good reputation. Why do you say that? It's obvious if you sponsored such a reckless project, people would naturally conclude that you are a reckless king. That's a chance I'm prepared to take. I want this plan examined by a committee of scholars. If they decide that it's feasible, I will approve it. Yes, your majesty. You should have seen those two ministers. The looks on their faces were simply hilarious. <laughs> and now, we must think of a fitting way to celebrate Christopher's glorious triumph. No, Don Bartolomeo. We mustn't celebrate until the King's Committee makes its decision. Your project is a good one, Christopher. Still, certain ministers oppose it. I know that, Father Martins, but King John liked the plan. I saw it in his eyes. Did you get the same impression, Father? <laughs> Dear brother-in-law, I can't begin to tell you how proud I am of you. I did have my doubts, but now I can see that you're destined for greatness. And if there's anything I can do for you, I hope you won't hesitate to let me know. <laughs> <laughs> now then, I'm sure you have time to stay for lunch. We'll start with venison and... No, I'm afraid I can't stay. I have to leave right away. Something tells me Christopher is eager to set sail for home, am I right? Mm-hmm. I thought so. <laughs> working on a project that could make Portugal a great power. Really? Yes, really. That's why he cannot be distracted from his work. Not even by my illness. So don't say a word. It will be our secret. Understood? Yes. Mama! It's Diego! Mama! Diego, how many times have I told you not to barge in while your mama's resting? Sorry. I have news, Mama. Papa's ship has just come in. I know, my love. That means he'll be home soon. <laughs> Yay! Not so fast! Philippa! Diego! Papa! <laughs> Papa! <laughs> <laughs> I sure missed you. And 
I missed you, son. Where's your mother? Here I am. Glad to be home, Christopher. Very. <laughs> <laughs> my audience with the king was a success. He's asked a committee of scholars to examine my proposal and advise him on whether to approve it. Christopher, that's wonderful. The king will be here shortly. What shall we recommend to him? Why, I would have thought that was obvious. We shall tell him to reject this ridiculous scheme. Mm. Mm. Yes, we're all opposed to the plan Captain Columbus submitted to the king, but what reason should we give? Captain Diaz, any suggestions? There's only one reason, his error in calculation. Yes, but we're not altogether certain. Certain about what? Hmm? It's a question of calculation, sire. We think Captain Columbus has made a very serious error. That's right. As chief mathematician in the Royal Institute of Technology, I've checked the captain's figures. He has underestimated the distance from Europe to Asia by 9,000 miles. Is that so? Captain Diaz, could Columbus have made such an error? Yes. Though to be fair to him, the error could just as easily be our own. Then why not let him settle the question by making the voyage? Because... because... Yes? Because lives are at stake, that's why. If Columbus makes this voyage, 50 sailors will go with him. And if his calculations are wrong and ours are right, every man on the expedition will waste away of thirst thousands of miles from land. In his place, would you still take the risk? Yes, I, I suppose I would. And so would I. Continue your work. Well, so much for that argument. Let's examine the charts that Captain Columbus has drawn up. I'd like to know if there are any inconsistencies. Come on, Diego, let's take a walk. Can we go to the beach, Papa? Sure. Enjoy your walk. We will. Bye. Diego? <laughs> Don't be late for lunch, you two. <laughs> <laughs> You certainly were. What a runner. Now come, time for lunch. Huh? Hmm. <gasps> Where did this come from? Oh. Hmm. This bundle washed up with the tide. It must have originated in the distant lands of Asia. Your Majesty. The Committee of Scholars has reached its decision. And what is it? <clears throat> we gave the proposal a careful and even-handed examination. We were very impressed at the clarity and attention to detail with which Captain Columbus presented his scheme. We are certain that the young captain will achieve considerable oh. distinction if he continues to work diligently. Uh, get to the point, will you? Yes, the point. Quite so. I was just coming to it. Owing to the high cost of the proposed voyage, its likelihood of failure, and Portugal's long-standing policy of reaching the Indies by the African route, the committee recommends that Your Majesty reject the plan. Reject the plan? Well, what do you expect? Columbus If I understand correctly, you're recommending that I reject the proposal because you think it would lead to an expensive failure and you'd rather I sponsored more voyages down Africa's coast. Yes. With all due respect, the committee feels that the African route is the best one. We believe it is only a matter of time before a Portuguese vessel rounds the African continent to reach the Indies. As for this proposal, its failure could become a national embarrassment. I have no great fear of embarrassment. Rather, I'm thinking about the future of my country, and the best way to make that future bright is to expand her influence as a trading power, don't you agree? Of course I do, sire. But the nation's wealth is limited. We simply can't afford this scheme. Enough. You've made your point. But I'm afraid you haven't convinced me. I instruct the committee to re-examine every aspect of this plan. <laughs> and quickly. <laughs> Frankly, I'm intrigued by it. And I cannot understand why the committee is so bent on rejecting it. <laughs> If, after re-examining the plan, the committee still thinks I should reject it, then I will. I understand, sire. I expect your report in a week. Yes, your majesty.
Something is very wrong here. <laughs> Diego, be a good boy and play alone here for a while. Sure. <laughs> Martha? Huh? Oh, what can I do for you, sir? You can tell me what exactly is the matter with Philippa. Oh. Tell me. She's my wife. I have a right to know. No, I can't. <laughs> I suppose she asked you to keep quiet. But you must tell me, Martha. She's my wife. <laughs> is she seriously ill? Oh, yes, she is. She's been growing steadily weaker for years now. Ever since Diego was born, she suffered from fainting spells and dizziness. <laughs> About a year ago, her cough started. At first, it wasn't serious. We thought it was a cold. But now... <laughs> I began to fear for her life, Master Christopher. But she begged me not to say anything. She didn't want to worry you. <laughs> Christopher, a letter's arrived here for you. And it bears the official seal of the king. I wonder what it is. <gasps> I've been summoned to the palace. The king's committee is ready to announce its decision. So you're returning to Lisbon. Mm-hmm. But I'll be back soon. I want to start spending more time with you and Diego. Huh? Just give me three months to finish my work. Of course. Your proposal is rejected. Rejected? And why is that? First of all, there was a serious error in your distance calculation. What? That's imp... Mm. Let me finish. Mm. Then there was the question of cost. Quite simply, your scheme would have been too <gasps> expensive. <laughs> You're wrong, and this decision is unfair. <laughs> You would be wise, Captain, not to make disrespectful comments about a royal committee. What? But I deserve a fair hearing. Mm. You had your hearing, and you failed to convince the committee. Your plan's rejected. Is that your last word? Yes. Wait, let me see the king. I know I can convince him. Wait. Please, wait. Captain Columbus has left, sire. Was he very disappointed? Yes, bitterly. <sighs> what? The plan was rejected? I'm sure it was because you were rude to the committee. Huh? No, I wasn't. I wanted a fair hearing. No! I should have known you'd ruin it all! Out of my sight! I was right about you all along! You're nothing but a foolish Genoese commoner! Huh? Oh. Huh? Christopher. They rejected my plan. Never mind that. A messenger just came with news from Porto Santo. It's bad news, Christopher. <gasps> Philippa?
Are you sure you want to leave Portugal, Christopher? Yes, I am. I was very impressed by your presentation. If you stayed, you might persuade the committee to reconsider. But I know fortune has been unkind to you here. Perhaps by leaving Portugal, you will renew your spirit and your confidence. I hope your new life in Spain brings you happiness, Christopher. But I don't understand why you chose Spain as your destination. A sister of Felipe's lives there. I'm hoping she'll help me to look after Diego while I build a new life for myself. What kind of new life? I don't know. I haven't given up my dream of crossing the ocean. But for the time being, I have a little boy to care for and a grieving heart to mend. All aboard, that's going aboard! <laughs> well, it's time to leave. May the Lord go with you both. Farewell. Take in the gangplank! Safe journey. Goodbye, Christopher. Goodbye, Diego. Farewell. Keep the drum!